Snub Nub 7 in the house. There's something that grinds my gears. Ah! Woo! When you know, you know when I do that, something grinds my gears. What is it that grinds your gears today, sir? All you do is complain. Well, why do people complain? People complain because they feel as though something is wrong. People complain because you brought me this food. It's supposed to be hot and it's cold. You act like there's something wrong with complaint. Even babies that can't talk, they try to show you complaint. This ain't right. You didn't change this diaper. I just changed your diaper, but you did not do it right. So I'm going to keep crying. I don't know how to express myself. So I'm going to keep crying till you change this diaper right. There's nothing wrong. And we have a right to complain. You have a right to complain. When you know you didn't use all that water, why is my water bill so high? Why is my electric bill so high? Why do these tires for this car cost so much? The only time we don't like complain or complaint is when the complaint is targeted against us. Now all of a sudden, 
Why you complain? That's all you do is complain. Why do you think that there's course of law filled with complaint? I want that person to go to jail because they killed my brother. It's not right. Why isn't he in jail? That's a complaint. You complain when George Zimmerman was still running around loose and Trayvon Martin was dead. You complain. There's nothing wrong with complaint. Suck an egg. We complain all the time. We have a right to complain when there's error. Complaint is like when your body physically get hurt and you say, ouch, oh, and you scream and you complain. This way you express to others something is wrong. Complaint means something is wrong. You go to church every Sunday and you turn to God complaining because something is wrong. You want God to change things. You want to make things better. It's, there's nothing wrong with complaint except when you're the one that is causing somebody to complain. That's all he do is complain. Ain't nothing right. Exactly. Nothing is right. You're absolutely correct. Nothing is right. You're absolutely correct. I was born in a world filled with war and rape and murder and lies and slavery, et cetera, et cetera. You would think I, I should complain. There's nothing wrong with complaint. But those who are guilty of the complaint, targeted, they are the ones that cause us to complain, they have a problem. So now, hmm, I'm going to keep complaining because something is wrong. I'm going to keep complaining until the problem is solved. That's what you do when you get those gifts at Christmas time and you don't like it. And you bring them back to Walmart or whatever you got those things from because this is not what I want. It's not the right size or whatever it is. You you complain, I, you know, I want my money back. Can I get a refund or exchange or something? You are complaining. Why do we always want to be silly when we have the right to complain, we just don't like when somebody is complaining about something we believe or we do. Why you complain so much? But that's all we do 24 hours a day in this nation, all over the world. People complain. Why can't I get the COVID-19 people running around driving miles and miles trying to get the vaccine because they don't want to die. I don't want to get sick and they're willing to drive hundreds and hundreds of miles to try to why can't I get the vaccine where I live? Complaint. There's nothing wrong with complaining. Even animals, your pet dog will complain. And those of you who own pets, you know what I'm saying is true. A dog can't talk. A parakeet can't talk. Your pet can't talk. But they let you know something is wrong. I, they, they complain. I don't, this is the wrong food. I don't want this. Nothing wrong with complaint. Get out of here. I don't want to take a lot of your time. And we have been talking a little bit today. But this came to mind because it, it really has been bothering me. But I didn't really know how I wanted to express myself. I was having a comment with a brother and he said something and we're going to talk about that. Start bothering me. 
So I'm going to see if I can get my act together and make my complaint. <clears throat> the topic that we chose for these few minutes is most men think with their penis. We have somebody like Donald Trump and he was accused of interacting with women and because of who he was, he said he had the right to grab their vagina, Donald Trump, who became president. He wasn't president then, but in his mind, I'm a celebrity, I'm rich or whatever. These women wanna get next to me. They don't mind that I grab them in the vagina. We've been talking this week about Nation of Islam and Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad had all these wives, so they claim. Governor Cuomo, the uh, governor of New York, Cuomo, is in a scandal right now. At least five women have come out, accuse him of sexual harassment. And what brought me to this topic, myself and another brother, we was talking and the conversation was about war and the history of wars and how men go to into these into war soldiers and most of the time they end up raping the the women in that country and get all these mulatto hybrid mixed breed babies however you want to call it raping the woman of their enemy the women that they are fighting against. And the brother said, we talked about it, and then the brother was talking to me as though that's acceptable behavior. Why you gotta go in and, and rape these women like that? Well, that's what men do. That's what history, that's why I say what I say. A few years back, I was a manager at a store and we needed to hire a cashier. My manager did not pick the most qualified cashier. He picked a woman with a short skirt so when she bent over, you can see all her butt cheeks hang out. And ignored the women that came to us in a manner, a professional manner, trying to get this job. The one had her boobs all hanging out, butt cheeks hanging out. That's who he wanted. So he could watch her all day long. which became a detriment to our business. She can't count money. She can't do the job. But he hired her just so he can look up her backside while we have to do extra work to go behind her. <laughs> Not literally go behind her, you know, because he had her there so he could look behind her, up her backside. We got to go behind her, her work, because she all messing up. Every few seconds, she, she don't know how to run the, 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 the cash register. She don't even know how to count money. She is there hired so he can ogre her, Google her, however you want to call it, all day long. This woman, was her brain was like a bag of rocks. 
So what do all these things have in common? Donald Trump, Elijah Muhammad, the soldiers in the battlefield, Governor Cuomo. And I want to add myself. Oh, you're going to add yourself? Yes. I'm going to add myself. I'm driving down the road. La, 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 la. And I confess. I'm telling you, I'm going to confess. It was some big booty girl walking on the sidewalk. And you know, you're driving and it, the view is going too fast. You want to get a little extra look. So I'm taking my eyes off the road and it only take a few seconds to get your eyes off the road. And when I turn around, I almost slam into a mailbox or whatever it was out there on the street. Try to look at some woman's backside going down the road. What do all this have in common? Here I am. I'm willing to wreck my car, destroy somebody's property, so I can look at some woman's backside. It's worth the risk. Is it worth the risk? What is the benefit? There is no benefit. So we live in a world, we live in a society where many of these women, and I would even add the vice president of the United States, what's her name, Kamala Harris? I used to read a lot of the uh, comments and a lot of the men just like Kamala Harris because they think she look cute. Not because she can do the job. Not because of her, her humanity. Man, I smashed Kamala Harris. This is the environment that we live in. And this is the mindset, this is the mentality when you allow men to rule, this is what you get. So what do all these this have in common? A bunch of men who are thinking with their phallus, thinking with their penis. I could have destroyed my car. I only had liability insurance. Liability don't pay for your car when you wreck your car. So was that worth looking at some woman's backside walking down the street? And who knows who she was? Where she going? I would have wrecked my car, look stupid and dumb on the side of the road, car all bent up, trying to look at her backside. So here we are. We live in a world because men think with their penis and we live in a world that's all banged up. Destroyed. There was some brothers that I know had a debate, go back and forth. And now they hate each other because somebody don't like what, else, what somebody else said. So I want to kill him. This is how men think. The mindset of men. They're not thinking with their brain. They're thinking with some other animalistic side of them. Some other savage side of themselves. And these are your presidents. These are the leaders of your organizations. This is your husband in the house. Even Elijah Muhammad taught. The MGT, he taught the MGT, Muslim girls training, the women in the nation of Islam, he taught them, do not leave your daughter with your husband. Why? As you know, many of these fathers will take advantage of the love their daughters have for them. 
and rape their own children, male and female. This is the kind of world we live in. Because men think with their penis. I disagree with Elijah Muhammad. He said, he taught. He said that the sexual drive of the male is so strong that you would have sex with a gorilla because a female gorilla is, her, her, the, her biology is much like a female and men so damn weak, your sex drive is so strong, you will lay down with a gorilla. Now you also have men that will lay down with dogs and sheep and cows, let alone a gorilla. My question is, what kind of man are you? What kind of man is so weak and so pathetic and a loser, you're going to lay down with a gorilla or a cow or a dog or a chicken or whatever? You that pathetic. And these are your leaders because it's happening in this country. Raping people. You so pathetic and a loser. You buying sex. Prostitute. Prostitution is big in America. These and these, the majority of your leaders are men. And this is how they think. Was it worth the death of Malcolm X and what happened to the nation of Islam so Elijah Muhammad could lay down with some young girls, teenagers, whatever they was? You, you risking your organization and everything that you built, your reputation for some booty. What? And then you're going to tell me about God? Your God got you weak like that? Most men think with their penis. They don't have a brain. And these are your leaders and your teachers. And most of them always have some kind of scandal involving their exploitation of women and children. What's his name? Dr. Malachi York leader of the New Orleans, he's sitting in prison right now molesting children. And oh, oh, the government, the government. There are men right now that have not got caught doing the same thing. I remember there was a time in my neighborhood, I don't know about the rest of America, but when I was growing up, Little girls could have could be friends with grown men. It was no problem. Because they didn't think that way. Now you live in an environment of purity savages. A little girl should be able to have a relationship with her father or any grown man and not worry about that man trying to rape and molest them. Right now, I am missing most of my grand uh, relatives, my grand nieces, and I have more grand nieces than I do uh, grand nephews. I cannot have a decent relationship with my nieces because I don't want to put myself in a position because of what these idiots have done. So they cannot enjoy being around their uncle, a real strong man. So they'll know when they are looking at potential husbands and boyfriends to know what to look for. So I'm talking to this brother and he said, that's just history. But the way he's talking to me, it's almost like 
that's acceptable behavior because you go to war and there's no other women available and you ain't had no nuki in a long time so you decide to, to rape somebody because that's what men have done throughout history and you want these suckers to rule you at the same time they'll tell you I'm a god and tell you how strong they are but you can't handle a woman getting naked in front of you you start going crazy man look at man look at them uh, uh breasts look at them breasts man look at look at I felt so stupid that day when I was driving my car and almost wrecked my car on the sidewalk trying to look at somebody's backside. I felt so stupid. You better than this, bro. Never again. That taught me my lesson. And so when you go back and look at the history of the Nation of Islam, Black Panther Party, Dr. King, it all it always have a common thing. These weak men. Weak men. The sisters cannot be involved in the struggle. The sisters can't be involved in the church because the preacher and the leader want to get in their panties. A sister should be able to be part of any organization that we build and don't worry about the leader trying to get between her legs. She should have that connection to that example of power and strength that she fall in love with. But no, the leader, the preacher, whoever it is, they see that they have a victim and they think with their penis, you can lose it all. You can mess everything up, but you don't care because I got to satisfy my phallus. I got to satisfy my sexual nature. It's natural. This is not to say. This is not to say. That there's something wrong. And it's natural, of course. For us to be sexual. That's not the problem. The problem is you don't allow your penis, you don't allow your sexual nature to override your brain as a man. Now you expect that from boys because this is all new and they really don't understand what's happening to them and, and whatever. But as a man, how many women have you slept with? How many children do you have? Why is all this exciting? You got, you need 20, 30 wives and all this other nonsense. For what? Because that's how many men, that's, that's their only way they can show that they are a man. How many conquests, how many children they have? They talk about Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan had 300 children or, or whatever it is. So what? Genghis Khan is dead. So what? He had 300 children. So what? What do it mean? What was the benefit? And see, that's the primary reason of why many of these black women bashers behave the way they do because their manhood even though they have money they might have education and all these different things they don't feel like a man till they can be like the other insane men you got to show that you're a man by how many babies you can make how many women you can exploit And so we live in a country, we live in a civilization, civilization, we live in a world controlled 
and governed by weak fools who don't have a brain. They are controlled by their penis. It's wonderful that a lot of females are in certain positions of power and celebrities and things of this nature. But even they would tell you, some of them will come out and tell you the reason why I'm a CEO, the reason why I'm in that movie, anything controlled by men is because my booty looked a certain way. My breast showed up a certain way. That's the reason why they got the part. Not necessarily because of their talent. Because I'm a man, I run the record company. I don't care really if you can sing or not. What you gonna do for me? Hmm. How you doing there, revealing? So, that's what it's about in this world. There's another sister that have a channel and she talks some real intelligent stuff, but she put her boobs out there and when you look in the comment section, that's why all the men are flocking to her channel because she got her boobs all in the camera. Baby, you sure look good. What is she talking about? I don't know. I'm looking at her big breasts. You have grown men that still trip off women's breasts. You should have had enough of that when you was a baby. Oops. Most of y'all didn't have no breasts when you was a baby. You was drinking on a cold plastic bottle that somebody warmed up on the stove or in the microwave oven. That's why you do women and view women the way that you do. You cold hearted towards women because you're not, you're not connected to women. You wasn't on her breast. You connected to a plastic bottle warmed up in the microwave oven or on the stove, a piece of plastic. So that's why you are cold hearted against women. You don't feel the way. I was raised, and many of my generation, a lot of us, we was raised on real breast milk right there with mama. That's why when I was growing up, you talk about mama, you're going to get your ass whooped. Daddy cool, but see, you had that connection with mama. You was right there for months and months and months on her breast. Don't talk about my mama. Now you notice we really don't trip off that no more. Now we call our mama a hoe and a thought and all kinds of names. That would not be tolerated when I was growing up. And even the brothers that claim they love the black woman, the soul sisters, they call you all out your name. Because they don't like what you say, what you do, because you wear some weaves, color your hair red, white, and blue, or whatever. And they supposed to love you. Well, I, I love you, sister. I don't care where all the weeds you want to color your face. I don't give a damn. We'll talk about that after I get you liberated out of the house of our oppressor. I'm not concerned with your hairstyle. But only thing on his mind is his penis. And when it's all said and done, he wants to get between your legs, whether you have a weave or natural hair or whatever. And he's going to leave you with a bunch of babies. All the, A lot of these pro-blackity black folks have babies all over the place. Don't pay child support. Not taking care of their children. They'll keep that on the down low. Then somebody will make a video, oh, so-and-so is exposed. A lot of these pro-blackity black men or whatever have biracial children. They've been sleeping around with white women and somebody exposed them. They already knew. 
We talked about it earlier, how people put on a show, pretending to be something they're not, which is the real definition of hypocrite. A hypocrite is one pretending to be something that they're not. The best leader is the one who is strong. The best leader is the one who is wise. The best leader is the one who is competent. It's not about gender because you can be stupid and be a male and you can be an idiot and be a female and you can be controlled by these desires. You have not matured and grown up enough so you base your decisions on your penis. And that's why you have China and Russia and all these different countries controlled by men fighting among each other because it's about their penis. My penis is bigger than yours. I'm the big shot. I'm the ruler. Insanity. And this is what you have in your government, in your schools, in your religious institutions, and in our households, men who think with their penis and not with their brain. They don't, they're not using their brain. And they make decisions, dumbass decisions, stupid decisions that cause us tremendous hurt. Now, if you don't mind, these idiots to keep control and to keep running things, fine, I'm just letting you know. They are the problem. Unless these men can change their mentality. But this is a way of life. You heard what they say. Boys will be boys. Men will be men. A lot of y'all women, you, you let them have that excuse for cheating on you. You give all your life to your family and you are loyal to your marriage vows, but this sucker have a right to cheat on you and do whatever because boys will be boys, men will be men. Who's the one that came up with that? I can guarantee you it was a man. Teaching our little boys how to be whores. They are the real whores. They are the real B-I-T-C-H. Men are the original prostitutes. The original hoes. Men are, not women. Men are the original sellouts. How can women be a sellout when they don't run and don't control nothing? Men are the originals. And then the ones they get their ass whooped by other men, then they turn on females. And eventually, the female will turn on her own children. And this is the reality, and this is the society, not only in America, but around the world that you see. Controlled by crazy, wacky men. And you don't want to Make something new. You don't want to make a change. You don't want to get out of this. Oh, and you want to pass this down to your daughters so they can live in exploitation under the governorship, the control and the domination of men who think with their penis. So you should not be shocked when your little baby girl go to church and the preacher been having relations with the preacher behind closed doors. Or the governor Cuomo. Or Donald Trump. Or Elijah Muhammad the messenger. This is what you want, so be it. But when you come here, that's not going to be acceptable. We don't do that. We want different. We want to change. 
You should want your man to be a man. So damn weak. Driving down the, the road and just because somebody got their ass cheeks out, you going to tear up your car trying to look at her backside. What can, that's, that's crazy as hell. Here you are supposed to be in love with a woman and you with her and somebody with that with their butt cheeks out, you with the woman you love, and you still, you so damn weak, you still gotta turn around and look at this woman with her ass out. Like you never seen somebody's booty before. You ain't never seen booty before? You never seen breasts before? Hypothetic losers and immature. You expect that from boys. All that is new to boys. They never seen a vagina. They never seen booty out like that. I can understand. Teenage boys, you a grown ass man still behave the same way. You want to keep this going to the next generation and on and on? How is we as human beings going to grow? Supposed to be the most intelligent life on this planet. But we are easily controlled by what's between our legs, male and female. So you know why they don't like me. Because you making excuses. Absolutely right, Revealing. Revealing says men over 40 be acting like that. Yeah, men over 40, over 30. Like, damn, are you serious? You should even be acting that way over 20. Damn. How pathetic, you bunch of losers. So I really, as much as I love women, I have to be careful because of these pathetic losers. I can't have a relationship with a female and just have a relationship with her simply because we are human beings trying to grow into the God that you're talking about. How are you going to be how are you going to become some damn God and the only thing you're thinking about is what's between your legs? Ain't no brain between your legs. You have to grow this. We go to the gym and we lift weights. And we do things to try to make ourselves healthy, but we don't do exercises and concentrate on the brain. We don't think. We thought. And most of you, once you get to a certain level, you already think that you know it all. Nobody can't tell you a damn thing. I don't need to do that no more. I already know. The teachings of Elijah Muhammad is perfect. Ain't nothing perfect. What is perfection? You never, and even in your teachings, it tells you, you never stop learning. You never stop growing. So how is it perfection? That means you can go beyond those teachings. But you'll never reach what's beyond because you allow yourself to stay on that level. You think you already made it. And you, so you are bound to your, to, to this flesh. As they say, your lower chakra, your lower nature. Instead of building that which is most high. There are people that tell me they are building their higher self. But when you talk to them, they talk savage, profane, nasty, have nasty. That tells me you have not grown. You just run your mouth. You're not grown. You've gone to a higher level than me. And you talk nasty, you're violent, you're profane, you're disgusting. You actually have a smile on your face bragging about how you suck phallus and lick vagina, and but you're on a high level. What, le what level is that? So I just wanted to get this off my chest. Because they make 
These men make me look bad because I'm not like that. No woman control me with her vagina. I'm not going to allow my penis to control my brain. It's not going to happen. I'm not interested. I don't care. You can put all the booty in my face all you want to. Most of y'all know I love in vogue. You can take in vogue, put them in front of me butt naked, and I'm going to be me. It's not, not That's not going to bother me. I would look and say to myself, wow, y'all still in shape for older ladies. That's it. I'm going to treat them like human beings and suggest that y'all need to put back on your clothes. Ain't nothing happening here. But of course, you have those. A man is a man. man. Men will be men. Boys will be boys. You're not a man. Oh boy, you're some type of savage animal. Because a boy and a man is a human being. I don't know what the hell you are. Some crazy even animals don't act the way most of a lot of these men act. Most male animals in nature only get crazy during the breeding season. After that, they're not running around trying to do nothing. That is over with. They have other things on their mind. <laughs> Sounds like you watched Cocaine Woodgrain live stream. He was talking about booty. A silly, a silly person. He's a silly man. But he's an example of the kind of man I'm talking about. Silly man. 30, 40 some years old, talking nasty and disgusting. And he's the one that is influencing our poor boys that's coming up. He's pathetic. He's a, a loser. When it's all said and done, he's a loser. Think he's smart. There's nothing that he says smart or intelligent. Only to the ignorant. That's why you will never see them come here. And if they do come here, you will see that they will bow down to when they come before a real man. They have no choice. Nothing else is, is acceptable. It's not going to happen. He needs to show these men, I get putty tang. I got some money. I don't need to show you nothing. Except me. I don't have to show you no big house, cars, how many children I got. Brag about how much putty tang that I had in my life. You don't know who and what I am. I don't have to show you nothing except be me. But he has to do that because he's not who he's trying to pay himself as. He's about to be a grandpa, but has the emotional intelligence of a five-year-old. There you go. Yeah. We're talking about Monty Cocaine Woodgrain. Some of you may have heard of him and some of you may not. A very childish man starts crying. He wants to be a comedian or whatever. He's not that funny, but he has an audience and they laugh and giggle or whatever. If you were, if you was that funny, go to the comedy clubs. Let's see what you can really do. You two crap. Go to the comedy club. Because the things that you talk about is not funny. You're not going to make it in, in, in real comedy. What he does is not comedy. They just like the fact that he's making mockery of somebody. Making mockery of, of Rashawn DeLay, uh, Umar Johnson. You know, making mockery. It's not comedy. It's just making mockery trying to degrade other people. It's not comedy. And he gets angry at you when you tell him, you're, bro, you're not funny. Then he start making video, except me. I know he watched my video, but he don't want none of this, this action. If somebody else made a video talking about he's not funny, 
He'll talk about them. They don't want to mess with me. Because they know. I'm not going to try to make nobody laugh. I'm going to throw down and tell people which, who and what you really are. And unfortunately, that's not funny. But that's him. We don't do that here. We raise, we nurture real men, real women here. You have a brain. And that's what we try to build here. That's what we want to build here. Your brain. Your penis and your vagina will take care of itself. Again, this has nothing to do with what is natural. Enjoy the person you love. Your husband and your wife, your girlfriend. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about leadership position. Examples for our behavior in society and life. That's something that the Bible, what religion is supposed to do. This goes to show you religion and spirituality has failed us. That's what it shows because spirituality and religion, even some of these black conscious teaching, is supposed to make us better, but it's not making you better. And the main reason is because a lot of this spirituality and religious stuff was created by men, not by no God. And it gives men favors and it gives men excuses for being a bunch of losers, weak, pathetic losers and weak. I've never been around so many weak men in my life coming on social media. They cry at the drop of a pen. Oh, you talk about Elijah Muhammad. Oh, you cry about Kimmy. Oh, just a bunch of crybabies. So the first thing they tell me, you don't have no money. <laughs> you don't have no money and you don't have no children. Because <laughs> that's all they have. They don't have nothing on a higher level of intellect to offer nobody except their little money or who they copy. I'm trying to be like Malcolm. I'm trying to be like Marcus Garvey. When you come here, Angel Snub Number 7 is being me. I'm not trying to be like Elijah Muhammad or Jesus or whoever. I'm just trying to be me, the best that I can be. Original, because that's how everybody is born. Original. You're not a damn clone. Except when you get a hold of religion and spirituality, you're trying to be, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Mohammed. I want to be like uh, Noble Drew Ali. I want to be like, I want, I want to be like my daddy. I don't want to be like my daddy. My daddy is my father, my father, my dad, that's who they was. I don't want to be like them. Now, if I choose to do the same kind of work or whatever my father did, you can do that, but I don't want to be like him. And when my father died, he's gone. There's nobody else on the planet like my father or my mother when they're gone. We are unique to ourselves. Stop, try, stop trying to be like others. I don't want nobody that come here to try to be like Angel Snub Nub 7. There's a difference between respecting somebody and becoming a damn fanatic. I don't want you to praise me like I'm some kind of God. I don't want you to look at me like I know everything. I'm some kind of this and that. No. I'm just a step. I'm just a stepping stone. Somebody to step on so that you can go higher. I'm going to say that again. I am a stepping stone. You step on me so you can climb higher. Go to the next level. Look down on me and I'll be so happy to see you in heaven going up. Stepping stone. 
You will never hear these people out here call themselves a stepping stone because they know it all. You are below them. They are the teacher. You will never be nothing. You can't go beyond them. That's a wacky teacher. Any teacher wants to see their student go beyond them. The only teachers that don't want to see their students go beyond them is because they want to keep you on the level where you have to keep coming to them, praising them, looking for them for whatever. I want you to go beyond me. We got a whole universe out there. It's limitless. Why are you going to bound yourself to one person that's going to die? And then they look all crazy when the preacher die, when the messenger die, and all these people who you depend on, you look at our, at our organizations. The Black Panthers should be here. Don't blame J. Edgar Hoover. Don't blame the government. We follow people and we don't go beyond them. So when they put Marcus Garvey on a boat, that was the end of the United, uh, what they call it, UNIA. United Negro Improvement Association. That was the end of it. Because they didn't know how to operate without them. If you want to, with or, or without me, this mindset, this ministry should easily be able to keep going way beyond me. It don't stop. Because it's simply us accepting the reality of life. I am not the reality of life. I'm just part of life, the reality. And I will be gone. Don't let me stop you from going higher. I'm doing us a good favor. And I pat myself on the shoulder because I want to show you how to use your brain. Your penis is not your brain. <laughs> and I'm not going to be making excuses for our failure. Excuses because that's our nature. Our sisters could be in a more better condition, a better friend to us in this struggle if they had men in their life instead of just some animal walking around with a penis slinging around. They don't have a man. So you have something like the manosphere. Ain't nothing men about you. Nothing men about you. You're not a man. Complaining about women complaining uh, about hair weave and all this other nonsense. A real man, black man, a real soul brother in 2021, your only mission, your only reason to live, to be in existence is to save your women and your children, get them out of this damn jail once and for all. If you're not doing that, if that's not top priority, you ain't no damn man. And like King Noble said, that's a fact. Because you want better for your people. You want better for your children, your family. You want better. But when you're thinking about your, with your penis, it's not a priority. Grab him, grab him in the vagina. Let an old man sleep with your 20 year old daughter. This is all great. This is all good. It's all great. I don't want that. And yes, I complain. 
because it's not acceptable because we are better than that. The buck stops here. And speaking about the, the buck stops here, I've, I've done enough. <laughs> I've done enough talking today. And uh, I just wanted to get that off my, off my chest. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Revealing, for joining me in the chat room. I guess I talk too much for my deacons of reality to catch all the, the live stream, all the action today. That's all right. But uh, thank you again. It's always an honor to come and talk with us. Uh, send a shout out to my deacons of reality, to uh, Sister Noble, Levine, get her book, God is on trial. Information should be in the uh, description box. Shout out to Brother Talib, to uh, Brother Omar, and all those, Sister Ingrid, Sister Karen, and all those who uh, support this uh, platform of reality. Thank you so much. Those who are listening and those who will be listening to these words. And don't be scared to jot down comments. But I know why I don't get a lot of comments. Because you know ain't nothing gonna happen. You know your dumb ass gonna put comp some dumb comments in the comment section and you know your ass gonna get torn up here. So your best bet is just to hit the dislike button and go on about your business. Because you know ain't nothing happening with that. <laughs> you gonna make an excuse for this foolishness, for this weakness. If you call yourself a man, then be that. Stop perpetrating the fraud. On that note, as our soul brother, Dr. Cornelius, used to always say, as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. We are the 5,000. This music is courtesy of Astro Boo Baby. Subscribe to his channel, Zena Faye, and... Uh, Subscribe to those, those those channels there. We out. You don't know by Astro Boube. Yeah.